Hello everyone and welcome to Story Corner Adventures. Today's adventure is actually going to take us to the country of Holland. I'd like to tell you a little bit about Holland first of all before we begin. Why are we learning about Holland? Well, because our new uh, novel, The Wheel on the School, is set in Holland. How am I going to tell you about Holland? Well, through pictures and a little bit of experience. But in fact, I'm probably not the best tour guide for this particular tour. I haven't been there in 39 years. So if anything I say seems a little strange to you, it may not be true. And if you want to find out any more about Holland, there are probably better sources that you can find information on it. Anyway, let's begin and take a little bit of a closer look at Holland. Holland is also known as the Netherlands. In this particular map, it's just called Netherland. You can see that it's just on the uh, North Sea, west of Germany, and east of the United Kingdom. You'll recall the United Kingdom is England and Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland attached to uh, the Republic of Ireland here. Now, Netherland, or the Netherlands, is a country that was at one time mostly under the water. It has been reclaimed by the construction of earthen walls called dikes, after which they have pumped out a lot of the water back into the ocean and reclaimed very large tracts of land called polders. And those tracts of land have become very fertile over the years. They grow things very, very well. The capital city of the Netherlands is Amsterdam. Now, I need to talk for a moment about the word Holland and the name the Netherlands. In actual fact, Holland is only two of the provinces of the Netherlands. But for most people, even people who live in the Netherlands, the words Holland and the Netherlands are pr used pretty much interchangeably. Uh, our story does not take place in either of these two highlighted provinces. It takes place up to the uh, province the northeast, which is called Friesland. Friesland. Well, if you uh, have the last name Friesen, or if you know anybody who has the last name Friesen, there's a very good chance that one of their ancestors came from this land. It's also a place where beautiful Frisian horses originate, and it is also the place where the Low German language originates, which might be of interest to you. Friesland is situated along the North Sea, and although there are a lot of uh, urban areas, it is mostly farmland. It is very flat. Farming is a very common activity around here and because of course along the North Sea fishing is another very common activity. Some of the places you'll hear mentioned in the wheel in the school are names such as Ternad, Hantum, and Ness. Even more important than those ones is this one that is not mentioned in the story. I think it's pronounced Virum or Wirum. I'm not exactly sure. Now, why is it important if it's not even mentioned in the story? Well, because the author of The Wheel and the School, Maindert de Jong, grew up in the small village of Wirum. And the story takes place in a little village called Shora, which as he has said before, is based on Virum, but he's changed the names of it and of other people so that they don't feel that he's writing stories about them. Back to this picture here. You saw this on the very first slide. This picture shows three things that Holland, aka the Netherlands, are known for. Can you tell what they are? I'm going to give you a hint. It's not horses and wagons because horses and wagons have been used pretty much throughout the world. 
I'll give you a spoiler. Okay, one of the three things that the Netherlands is known for is wooden shoes. Now, people don't wear them anymore. I think from day to day, if you went to the Netherlands, you'd see that the shoes they wear are pretty much the same as everybody else. But in the not too distant past, they did actually wear wooden shoes. And that has become a symbol of the Netherlands. Can you tell the other two? I'll let you think about it for a little while. Let's find out a little bit more about the Netherlands. We'll first of all go to Amsterdam. Amsterdam is a country that mixes together a lot of new and a lot of old. Like most places in Europe, they don't tend to tear everything down as soon as they want something new. There are lots of very, very old buildings in the Netherlands, as well as some very new ones. One of the things this picture shows is the very steep roofs that are characteristic of the Netherlands, possibly to deal with the very heavy rains that they get at some times. You can also see the color of the roofs. They're not uh, shingled so much as tiled with uh, terracotta roof tiles. Terracotta is that reddish brown clay that flower pots are made out of. Amsterdam has roads but it also has a great deal of canals, quite a few canals that run through it. So many, in fact, that it's often referred to as the Venice of the North. And the canals are wonderful to look at in daytime and even more beautiful at night. You can see some people actually even live in boats attached to the canals. Some people live in some of the very old houses that are extremely tall and extremely narrow with only one or two rooms per floor. Uh, the Amsterdam is also known as the home base of Holland America, one of the uh, uh, cruise ship lines. Here is a wharf uh, that those cruise ships would be tied up at. Back to the picture again. Can you tell either of the other two things that Holland is known for? Well, let's continue our exploration. Remember I told you about those earthen walls that were built to keep out the ocean and then the water was pumped out? Well, this is how they pumped them out, using windmills. And the whole technology of making windmills is something that the Mennonites took with them to Russia when they uh, moved from there uh, at the invitation of Catherine the Great a couple of centuries ago. And there were at one time about 10,000 working windmills. There's still about 1,000 now, though they use other pumps in order to keep the water out of the uh, reclaimed areas and back out to the ocean. Here's another picture of a couple of these windmills. You can see that the entire top housing can turn. Here's an example of that uh, higher earthen ridge that uh, keeps the water from the North Sea out of the reclaimed land. By the way, if your last name is Dyke, or if you know anybody whose last name is Dyke, there is a very good chance that they, at some time in the past, lived on or near a dike. You can also see that there are many canals that collect water, oftentimes water that's to be drained from the land and pumped back to the ocean. A little bit different from the canals that we have in southern Alberta, which actually bring water to fields to be pumped onto fields to help crops grow. You can also see that this woman here is riding a bicycle. There are probably more bicycles than cars in the Netherlands and many people do not have cars and get around by bike. Because it is a particularly flat area, it makes it a very convenient uh, and cheap method of getting around. Oftentimes they have bikes that have been fitted with small gas or electric motors so that the rider can pedal or use the uh, gas or the electricity to help them go. These are uh, docks from a fishing fleet which are not 
in here right now, as you can see, because it's winter time. In the winter, the ice does not take over the North Sea completely. Uh, it, uh, the water gets some warm water that comes up from the Gulf of Mexico, so it doesn't get too, too cold. But it does get cold enough for snow and ice, and the boats have to be taken out during the winter time. Back to the picture again. So we know that we're famous for wooden shoes and we're famous for uh, windmills. The third thing, those flowers, do you know what they are? Those are tulips. Tulips are flowers that are grown from bulbs and most of those bulbs are produced in the Netherlands. Probably up to around 3 billion bulbs are produced at annually. Isn't this picture amazing? It looks like a blanket. You think you're looking at just a colorful blanket and then you look more closely and you see there are people. This is a field. It's a field of flowers. Now this is a touristy kind of picture where we have a a Dutch woman, by the way, people who live in the Netherlands are referred to as Dutch and their language is referred to as Dutch. The language that is Dutch, I believe, is probably a little bit more like Low German than it is like just about any other language. Probably more like Low German than High German is, in fact. Uh, she's dressed in, a, I think, more of a traditional boy's outfit. You can see the wooden shoes there and you can see many different varieties of tulips in the background. We have another rather touristy kind of picture here, though this young woman is dressed more in a traditional girl's outfit, and you can see some other types of tulips surrounding her here. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something else that is very well known in the Netherlands and perhaps not so well known here and that is a kind of bird that they live with very much. Storks. Now we've all heard of storks probably but we don't have too many of them in North America. We have other birds with very long legs like this such as flamingos or herons or egrets. We have birds with long necks like swans and geese. We have birds with long beaks like pelicans, but we do not have storks. In the Netherlands, they have storks. Not so much these kind, which I believe are called marabou storks, but these kind here. They uh, live in Africa for much of the year, especially the winter time, but come the spring, they fly from uh, where they are in Africa at the uh, source of the Nile River and they fly across to northern Europe where they build nests. The presence of nests on buildings in the Netherlands is actually something that people really want. They consider storks to have to bring good luck. And so families feel lucky indeed if a stork, a family of storks, chooses to build a nest on their roof. Uh, storks return to the same nest year after year. So if you have a pair of storks nesting on your roof, there's a very good chance that they will come back to your house the following year. Storks will build nests wherever they can. Here's a stork nest on the minaret of a mosque here. Not only do people uh, like having storks on their nests, uh, on their roofs, but they will sometimes even put up frames to help encourage storks to build those nests on the roof. Why do they like having them there? As I said, they feel they bring good luck. Uh, many people like the sound that they make when they are happy, which is kind of a clapping of their beaks. So now that we know a little bit more about the Netherlands or Holland, I'd like you to join me in uh, listening to the Wheel on the School, which is a chapter book that is 15 chapters long, and it's a fairly long book.
I hope you enjoy it. You're not going to see any pictures from this uh, from the chapters except for a couple of places where I think I need to supply a couple of pictures. Other than that, you're going to have to make the pictures in your head. I hope you enjoy it. Please join me on another Story Corner adventure soon, and I will let you uh, join the adventures of the students of the Shoras School in the book, The Wheel on the School. Thank you for listening, and have a good day.